Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In today's video, I will show you how to start the PMDG Boeing 747 engines. For instance, the aircraft system is already powered up and the pre-flight check is completed. Now, if you are looking for the full pre-flight from cold and dark tutorial, you will find the link to that video at the end screen of this video. Without further ado, let's get started. Now for the engine start, uh, I'll be using the APU bleeder. First, I have to start the APU by moving the APU start selector momentarily to start, then release it. It springs back to on position. This action will initiate an automatic APU start sequence. Now to monitor the APU indications, I will select status from the display select panel. And you can see here the APU readouts showing the start process. When the APU start cycle is complete, a white APU running memo message will appear on the primary ICAS display. But I have to clear this Ember memos first by using cancel button. I got APU running memo message confirming that the start is complete. I will now connect the APU generators to the electrical system. On the display select panel I select electrical and confirm that the APU generators are connected properly to the system. Now using my FMC from the menu page I select FS actions then ground connections. I will disconnect all the ground units from the airplane. And we can confirm this from the external view. Packs are selected normal. Recirculation switches go on. At this point I got both the, the APU electricals and bleed air established. I can proceed now with the before engine start procedure. Now to prepare the engine start, I will perform some actions commonly known as the before start procedure. This will put the engine start in the proper and correct conditions. I will start this uh, procedure with the hydraulic pressurization using the demand pumps and we start always with the selector number 4 to prevent unnecessary fluid transfer. Selector number 4 to aux number 1 to AUX, then both the number 2 and 3 to AURO. Ember system fault lights all out. Ember pressure light for the demand pumps 2 and 3 also out. From the display select panel I press fuel select button to bring the fuel synoptics to the lower display. Here what I'm looking for is to check whether the center and stabilizer tanks has fuel. And as you can see here, they are both empty. And the reason for doing this check is to know whether the center and stabilizer fuel switches will be selected or not. And for instance, they won't be selected. All the other fuel switches go on. Amber pressure lights all out. Beacon switch both. Stabilizer trim is plus 6 units. I set this using the stabilizer position indicator by moving this white band with my trim switch to 6 thick mark. And finally the transponder is set to transponder. At this point I can proceed with the engine's start. Now for the engine start, I want you to check first uh, on your Boeing 747 airplane at the overhead panel where the engine start control panel is and see here in this area if it looks blank like this. And if it does, this means that you don't have an auto start feature installed. And if you find at this blank area an auto start switch, as you can see here, this means that your engine system has an auto start feature and these two different situations will make a difference for the way you handle the engine's start. For those who have uh, no auto start installed, I will show you how to add this feature later on. But let me now show you the basic engine start without an auto start, this commonly known as a manual engine start. 
Now the engine start actions are initiated by first turning the packs to off. I select engines to bring my secondary engines indications on the lower display, as you can see here. Now I check the current ambient temperature here and it's plus 14 degrees Celsius. We are below 30 degrees Celsius. This means that I can start two engines at a time. Otherwise, which means above 30 degrees Celsius, the start procedure will be one engine at a time. Now I will initiate the start with the engines number 3 and 4. I click on the starter control to pull the switch out. The start white light on each switch comes to view to indicate that the start valve is open. On the lower ICAS display, I start monitoring the start progress with first the N3 and it's pulling up nicely. At 25% N3, I introduce the fuel to the engine by selecting the fuel switch to run. The fuel flow then is checked. The EGT is rising nicely. And we want to keep an eye on the EGT does not reach the EGT limit indicated by the red line. Now I watch for the starter cutout when the N3 reaches 50%. 50% N3 start white lights extinguished indicating that the start valves are closed. Now before the N3 reaches the idle we want to check for existing movement in both N1 and N2 with a rising in the oil pressure. Finally we let the engine stabilize at idle. Now the start cycle for the engines number 3 and 4 is complete. Now I go back to the overhead panel and proceed with the engines number 1 and 2 start following the same steps. And this is the way we start manually the Boeing 747 engines. Now I'm gonna show you how to add the auto start feature to your engine's system. And you can see here, for instance, there is no auto start switch. Now to add this feature to your engine's system, you go to your CDU from the menu page, select PMDG setup, then aircraft, equipment, then using the next key step through the pages until you find the, the engine auto start system with yes or no options as you can see here hit the line select key to swap from no to yes now i go back to my overhead panel and you can see here now the auto start switch is installed now I will discuss the auto start briefly to see how it differs from the manual engine start. All the engine start sequence will be the same as I showed you in the manual start except the way we initiate the start is a little bit different. Let's see how the auto start is initiated. First the auto start switch is checked on. Now I pull out the start switches number 3 and 4. Here you will notice that the white starred light remains extinguished. This action, unlike the manual start, will arm the start valve for opening. The valve will open only when I position the fuel switch to run. From this point, the engine electronic computer, EEC, will manage the start sequence automatically and pilot action is not needed. And this completes today's tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.